particularly with funding and mapping. So I know Steve Fenske is out. Um, Scott, was there somebody else who was going to take the lead on this, or were you going to go through it? That's a good question. Who uh, else from the group here might like to walk us through what we have? Dave, would you be up for that? Normally, but I don't have a voice today. Ah. <laughs> Got it. I can't see everybody, so I'm not sure who's who's here, but if there is somebody else from this group that would like to take it through, that would be great. No volunteers. No, no volunteers. What happened to Ge Steve Georgie? For crying out loud, he's usually jumping all over that. Well, there you go. <laughs> Who's that talking? So, I can try uh, fill in for Mr. Fenske, but uh, do the best I can. Uh, outline of key challenges. Obviously, uh, we're gathering information on the uh, projected cost of reaching 100% uh, of Minnesota household. Certainly, is is uh, the number of households has increased um, because of the way we're counting uh, habitable locations now, including uh, summer homes, lake places, etc. And uh, those are going to be more difficult locations, obviously, when we're talking about lakeside uh, locations, etc. cetera. Uh, there's definitely an increased cost of materials and delays due to the supply chain issues. And uh, cost per served uh, unit is going to be higher. Uh, installation costs to the harder to reach in unserved, underserved areas is certainly going to be higher due to geographical challenges such as ledge rock and again as we talked about lakeside locations uh, getting to remote locations um, loss of arda funding reduces the total federal investment dollars in minnesota i think this is critical for the legislature to understand even with uh, the uh, beat funding um, and other federal funding programs, um, ARDOF was one of the largest awards was in the state of Minnesota, and that has not been approved. So that's a setback that uh, the state will have to overcome. Uncertainty of the results of the SEC mapping efforts creates uncertainty in the broadband program and the corresponding amount of grant funding that would be available and be necessarily uh, be appropriated by the Minnesota legislature to broadband expansion. Permitting costs in Minnesota have increased and are challenging, um, and they create delays in projects and implementation. So uh, I think that conversation needs to take place with uh, the DNR and other permitting organizations and uh, the Office of Broadband, DEED, etc., to try and improve that situation for our ISPs. We've also heard from some of the uh, ISPs that prevailing wage requirements um, may be associated with some of the federal programs and other grantees. Um, and uh, they certainly impact labor costs on projects for some of the ISPs. We heard from one uh, um, ISP that it creates, you know, friction in the workplace because projects that require um, the prevailing wage oftentimes create that, you know, friction. Who gets assigned to those projects? <clears throat> So um, I know we don't have the number in here yet. We heard from Dave, we heard from uh, Ryan, some of the significant costs that they've been seeing for, for those drops. And uh, we also got some information from one of the ISPs that's working in Northern Minnesota. 
So that number is definitely going to increase from the 5,400 that was in the last report. Yeah, and it's probably even higher than the plug number we've been using of about 9,000 a drop. I think it, it may exceed that. Yeah. Well, I think we have to, you know, do what we can to try and get our arms around that number for the final report. <clears throat> mapping, um, improved mapping is likely going to increase the number of recognized unserved locations. Um, and while improved mapping is positive, the realization of more unserved locations will increase the total investment needed to serve 100% of Minnesotans. Um, and so that mapping is going on, obviously, statewide with the Office of Broadband's resources and uh, at the same time with the FCC new uh, fabric that they're creating from, um, you know, the self-reporting by the ISPs. The ability to challenge mapping data to produce more accurate maps is, is certainly time intensive and uh, access to quality data sets is all, isn't always readily available to support the challenge process. Um, and, you know, I think it was stated earlier that the map is supposedly coming out tomorrow and will be open <laughs> till January 13th. And it's going to be a challenge to make Minnesotans as a whole aware of that time frame and, uh, you know, submit those challenges where they're valid. Counties and townships need more resources to support the effort to improve and update mapping. Um, I know they are working with the GIS systems, 911 systems, etc. But uh, you know, we have such a rural state in many locations. We're going to need help. Uh, delays and improvement of the FCC fabric map slows implementation um, and isn't expected until March 2023 at the earliest which subsequently delays beat funding allocations to Minnesota as a result. So, you know, we got to stay on top of this mapping challenge and see what we can do uh, from the Office of Broadband and locally, regionally to make things happen. Any comments or questions or suggestions relative to either of those two categories of funding or mapping? What might need to be added or strengthened in either of those two areas? Teresa? I just have a comment and wondering if OBD, if they could take all the applications they got this year and get it running average. I, I mean, just what are they seeing as far as the costs? I think Diane offered that number in one of our subgroup meetings. Um, yeah, if they could get that so we could see what's, what's happening. I'm sure it'll go up as we go further and further out into the even more rural areas. But I, I would kind of think we should have that number too from OBD, what the applications look like today. Wasn't it $9,300 or something? Yeah, I think that was the number I had in my head too, Dave. And I have been keeping track of the things that she's forwarded and I've got a, a collection of those um, resources in one place so that they can be referred to. And Steve and I went over his spreadsheet after our last meeting to see if we can gather even more resources for checking that number. But I, I do think that number, Dave, is the one that I remember. Good question, Teresa. Anything else from the rest of the group about funding, clarifications, suggestions, any ways we can strengthen those? Anything missing? No, Scott, I, I don't see anything here, but I think uh, when we do the report, um, having sort of an understanding, like, I will have the spreadsheet in there, right, or a table yes. that shows the cost and how we calculate that for sure. But also, I think understanding what was a like kind of the conversation we had at the beginning of the call today, 
this is what was allocated for 2022. Here's what's coming for 2023. Uh, having an understanding of the, what funding is now and, and at least in the near future, it'd be good to, 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 to show that. Great. Yeah, the, wouldn't that graph also contain a historical perspective of what's been accomplished? Since yes, we the program started, and uh, you know the challenge that's still. Yeah, we've got the one pager that Diane shared with us uh, recently that's got some really good stats on it. That's going to be incorporated into the report. Yeah. Yeah, because that because I think you know when we do that calculation, it's all connected, right? If you. If the number, if the cost, well, if the unit cost goes up or like the cost per pass goes up, obviously the total number required goes up. Yep. And then you do minus RDOF, which is not there, then you can see a bigger gap, right? So it's easy to start to say, and only we only allocated this much so far. <laughs> so, you know, it's having that understanding would be good so that, you know, and not in, in passing, it's like, oh, there's money available. We're, we're good in this space, right? Which is like, no, we're, we're nowhere near close to that. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's our, our end goal is to be able to show the delta between all of the anticipated money that will come in through BEAD and, and other sources and demonstrate that there's still a gap that needs to be addressed by the state. All right, Steve, you want to take us through the recommendations then for funding and, and mapping? Um. Okay, continue to focus on using the reference speed of 100 up, 20 down, or excuse me, 100 down, 20 up, uh, which is the 2026 goals, as most providers are already uh, currently building to that as a minimum. Um, and establish a base annual funding investment uh, that is tied to the gap funding needed to reach 100% of the unserved, underserved, um, inclusives of all. Uh, expected federal funds. So this is again trying to send that important message that the legislature needs to create base funding um, if we're ever going to accomplish this challenge of 100% connected. Amend and update the current broadband statute to expand flexibility to the OBD to allow for larger state investments needed to support reaching the hardest to reach users. Um, you know, an example would be removing the $5 million cap. That's limiting the size of the grants that can be uh, offered, and uh, we need to do much, much larger grants uh, to accomplish this goal. Provide the state office of broadband the opportunity to look at larger project areas for catch up. Uh, for the two years of construction lost on broadband expansion due to the pandemic, funding delays, um, no legislative tax funding bills, etc. Ensure that there are community and provider voices contributing to the planning process that will shape the amount and approach to utilizing the new federal dollars coming into the state. <clears throat> Organize the opportunity for the legislature to review and study overall anticipated costs to reach all Minnesotans' goals to recognize federal funding alone will not be enough to fulfill the goal of reaching every Minnesotan. And address delays in permitting um, ASAP to help Minnesota meet their goals on connectivity and help mitigate the ever-increasing costs and utilize federal funds to increase staff in the Office of Broadband in anticipation of additional workload. And uh, based on the report today, it sounds like they're already addressing that to some degree, so. Um, sorry about the uh, racket. <laughs> Somebody give Buffy a treat. <laughs> Any thoughts or ideas on those uh, funding recommendations, suggestions, anything missed? 
No, nothing missed here. I, I think from funding perspective, once we do all the calculations, uh, just for simplicity, it'd be good to come up with like a solid number, right? Yeah. Like we, we recommend this for 2023, recommend this for 2024, 25 and 26, probably good for four years and just said, this is what's needed to close the gap. Just so that that can be our, not only in the report, but even our talking points going forward. Yvonne, you had a comment? Yeah, I was just like, as we're talking about all this, when we talk about 100%, we're talking about 100% wired broadband, correct? Or are we talking about 100% broadband service? I think that should be really clear as you're going through this, because I can see a legislator or you know someone reading this wondering about, you know, is there an upper limit to cost you know, here in terms of what we're willing to spend to bring wired broadband someplace where we could bring wireless broadband. So I think we should be, you know, explaining what we mean and making sure things are labeled clearly and making an argument for, I mean, if we're getting it $10,000 a spot for wired and there's opportunities to do high speed wireless, maybe we should be explaining that too somewhere. Yeah, we might need some guidance there, Yvonne, from Diane or others in the broadband office on what the details are of the federal funding requirements. I, I, I don't know myself. So are there limits relative to the deployment of service that might restrict some of that flexibility with wireless? I, I, I don't know. I think right. Diane has commented on that before, but I don't remember the answer. I just think we as, you know, as stewards of taxpayer dollars should be, you know, addressing the, okay, if it costs this much to do wired and it costs this much to do wireless, why are we doing it this way, you know, mm -hmm. and explain that. Well, and I, I think there's also a question of the urgency and speed at which you can get to unserved locations. Any other comments or suggestions, questions about the funding recommendations? If not, we can take those last two, Steve, for mapping. Mapping, um, provide funding to the Office of Broadband Development to ensure there are effective processes for individuals and organizations to submit challenges to the FCC slash CostQuest fabric maps used to determine how much federal funding will come to Minnesota. Um, and that kind of goes back to the staffing issue that's uh, mentioned above. Provide funding to support engagement. Um, is it through the Office of Broadband with communities, counties, townships, or regions so that they are prepared for the challenge period with the FCC and have the capacity to respond? <clears throat> and again, because this is so time sensitive, um, I don't know that we have the answer. If, if this is the Office of Broadband Challenge, um, deed, we need something, you know, unique, but it's also got to be very immediate, um, whatever is developed. But uh, I think it's a real concern that there are pockets in, in regions, uh, rural areas that are not serviced, uh, underserved for sure. And how are they going to step up with a challenge that will meet the requirements of the FCC to get them on the map and get them into the equation? Now, I don't know if there are other options, but that's a really great question, Steve, in terms of how urgent it is, how quickly the turnaround is as a recommendation for the next legislative session is that um, even doable is there another avenue that might need to be explored to pursue funding for this specific recommendation um, i think that's you know we need we need 
something from the OBD on their thoughts and if they have the capacity or not. And... Yeah, maybe maybe some of the uh, eight hundred eighty thousand of planning money might be utilized in some way, shape, or form. Don't know. Any other thoughts, suggestions, questions about the mapping recommendations? Anything missing? we covered all of it right yep we did okay so good good discussion um, I think a lot of, a lot of material is here and um, you know we'll, we'll uh, that'll get translated into the recommendation and obviously we'll, we'll that will kind of clarify it or crystallize it a bit more but uh, but I really appreciate the discussion from everyone that was that was really good and hopefully you found it worthwhile that we're doing this as a workshopping exercise and that we're talking about it together. Obviously, it's good to have something on paper that we can um, discuss and versus like just having the groups come up with a, with a final piece. Uh, but obviously, we'll go through the next one. Scott, as you said, you'll get the information in. We'll continue to update it. Then we'll circulate the link again and then, you know, we can we can send comments back and, and see uh, where we land. And obviously, we'll look at the report when we get to the December meeting. Any other uh, comments or questions or concerns you have about the draft recommendations and the challenges and the overall uh, document for 2022? I would invite people to keep um, reviewing it in the coming days since we've had this discussion now. It's fresh in your minds. Please feel free to add additional comments questions, if there's something not clear, I can circle back with you through our subgroups to make sure that people's questions get answered and would in invite your additional contributions to it. Is anybody not able to access the Google Doc? If that's a consideration for folks, I can certainly provide uh, a version in Word. You just sent a new updated one, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, I put a link to it in the chat. Yeah. Okay. And so that's the same document we've been working on here. So that will remain open for comment and suggestions. And that makes it a lot easier to collaborate when we've got one location for it and we can see everybody's comments that way. So, so maybe Scott, just just thinking out loud and you can correct me. So we probably have a period of time where the Google Doc is open right and people can make updates and comments and all that and then at some point we'll maybe at the end of the month we can cut it off and then flip over to the to the report yes. itself does that make sense yeah, that, and then the comments doesn't... should be on the report yeah i would say i'm just looking at the um maybe if we give ourselves through uh the end of the day wednesday next week that is the front end of the thanksgiving holiday if you can have whatever additions comments questions in by the 23rd end of day, then uh, I'll incorporate them into the draft and, and get that circulated after the Thanksgiving weekend so that we can start seeing what it looks like in the final version. And then we've got at least a couple of weeks to continue fine tuning the draft itself prior to the meeting in December. Yeah. So we'll have the first two weeks of December to pretty much continue to work on the, the final document. Uh, and what we'll do on December, if we can, again, if we can't, we will always work around this, but try to vote on it on that. Uh, I believe it's December 14th or somewhere around there is our next meeting. Uh, try to vote on it then. It doesn't have to be 100% done, but at least the challenges and the recommendations and the format and some of the key numbers should be where we need them to be. And then we can always make additional tweaks like we did last year of adding pictures and um, things in the appendix and things like that. So, uh, but that's the... That's the plan for the moment, and I think we, we're in good shape to be able to hit those deadlines. 
Thanks again, everybody, for your work on the subgroups. Both both teams did great work and have uh, spent a lot of time thinking about everything that's come into the recommendations. So appreciate all of that effort. Yeah. No, thank thank you, Scott. And I know this is the it's a challenging time, right? Because there's many things coming from all different directions. So we do appreciate you uh, keeping us on track and keeping this moving. So. Um, that's super helpful, and the format really helps sort of focus on the key issues versus getting lost in the uh, the organizational aspect of it. Uh, and and like Scott said, I want to reiterate everybody's time as well. I mean, there's some well thought out, both the challenge itself and then the uh, the matching recommendations. Those are those will look really good, and I think we can um, certainly some things we can reiterate over and over to the legislature and, and anybody else who wants to listen about broadband and wants to do something about it. So, so with that, I'll open it up. That's that. I will close the section on the, on the report for the 2022. Um, any other comments, concerns, or questions anybody from anybody on the task force? Not seeing anything. I, I do know there are several folks that are not on the task force. Is there anybody else that's not on the task force that has a, a comment at this moment or something you'd like to address with the uh, to, to the task force? Okay, not seeing any hands up or anybody going off mute. So with that, again, thanks to everybody for for your engagement. Um, good discussion. Uh, this is exactly what I was hoping that we'd have today, um, and I think we're really well positioned. I hope you have a very happy Thanksgiving. Spend unplug and spend some time with family. I know I'm excited because we're not going anywhere, and I'm just going to be out doing nothing. That's the best position <laughs> ever. Um, so, and with that, uh, we will see you back in December. Thanks, Teddy. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thank Take care. Bye.